Hello, and welcome to Into the Light podcast. I'm your host, Adina Movana. Today we have Melissa Griffin, and Melissa is a medium spiritualist, intuitive, and author of Validation of a Healer. She was born and raised in San Juan, Texas, and Melissa shares real-life events of mystical experiences from childhood to adulthood in her book. Her mentor and a famous psychic helped her explore these encounters and learn valuable lessons. Melissa is passionate about helping people who share similar experiences, and her purpose is to provide hope and healing to her readers. Amazing. Thank you so much uh, for being here today, Melissa. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so nice to have you. Um, I'm excited about your new book. This is, uh, you know, sounds like a great title, Validation of a Healer. And, you know, on my show here, I've had a few healers and practitioners. So I'm uh, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about your your work as a, I guess, as a healer and, and, and what you do exactly. It sounds like, you know, maybe helping people with their psychic abilities. Uh, you know, can you tell us and our listeners a little bit about, uh, you know, what you do from that from that intro? I do actually a little bit of everything through the years. I inherited actually these gifts and I have multiple gifts and the sessions I had with the famous psychic, her name is Nancy Weber. She did 40 years cold cases. So she sat with me for five weeks and we went over, I journaled all the experiences I've had from premonitions through deaths and dreams and just spiritual encounters. I became a, a medium at one point in my life where I was able to communicate with the dead. And so uh, I helped uh, some of the uh, incidences that are mentioned in the book are family where they had deaths. For example, my father was one premonition where he I didn't know he was going to grow ill. He did grow ill and he was healthy at the time. And it's just something that I had a discussion with my mom at one point and he, his, his death did end up you know, he, he passed away. And so that's just one example. Another example is my sister-in-law's mother, her brother was murdered. And yes, and they wanted to know I had never met him. So I, I spiritually spoke to him. She had basically just gave, given up in life. She, did, she didn't want to talk to anybody anymore, fell into a very deep depression, didn't need any more. And my sister-in-law's sister reached out to me and asked me if I could help. And I said, well, I'll do my best. I don't know how I can help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll reach Steve. I'll reach for him. He t- they told me his name. And when he died, that's all I needed to know. Never met the man. I didn't even know he had passed away. And so I called him, we had a discussion and I explained to him, he pretty much already knew what his sister was going through. And so he gave me a special message that only them two knew as children. So I didn't know what it meant. So it was like a secret. And then you, you yes. heard it yes. and then they believed you. <laughs> we all, yes. we all need the proof. <laughs> yes. And mother, I mean, my sister-in-law's mother just was in, very much surprised over that. No, she said no one knew of that conversation she had with her brother. That was something only between them. Oh, wow. So yeah. So, so you're basically, you know, with the mediumship, you're able to create contact with like their, you know, your past loved ones and all of that. Yeah, and I wow. cannot, um, cross spirits. Uh, my husband, uh, locally, we went to a, re- we tried a restaurant here locally and uh-huh. so it was haunted. Oh, I, and voice trying to get my attention. And I, we walked into the area, of the restaurant, and got a little bit lost because it's, it's, it's structured the way it's structured. Uh, it's like a, it's a ghost town oh. uh, type of a restaurant. And in the center is a restaurant. And then it, it, the out, the outer area is like a Western type of, uh, it's like area. a saloon, saloon, uh, oh, ghost yes. town, Western. Yes. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. And those places are haunted. I approached her, the, the waitress who took our order and I I said, I hear a woman, they can't hear what I hear. Yeah. I said, I hear a woman, she's breathing heavily, like she's gasping for air. And she said, well, wh- which side? And I said, on the left side of your property. She said, yes, I was with that woman. She died in my arms. What? Oh, gosh. Yes. Yeah. So that's just some of the examples of things that I've uh, encountered. I have uh, also have been learning to expand being a medical intuitive. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. so you're you're moving into the basically helping people heal things with your yeah. intuitive gifts. Yes. What what kind of healing work have you been doing with that? Uh, what I do is I can transfer heat best way to describe it, heat or electricity into this specific area, or I can sit here and I'm looking at whomever 
I can pretty much pick up what the problem areas are. And then what I'll do is I will ask my intuition, what is it that I'm seeing? How, how, how can I help that person? And so I, I get information and then it gets relayed back, uh, you know, verbally by myself. Oh, wow. Yes. So did you have to like cultivate these abilities in some way or were you, I mean, I, you know, I've heard like, okay, we're all born with intuitive abilities. We just need to tap into them or not tap into them. But did you have to really work at this? like honing in on this skill or what you what know happened? what to be honest it, uh, this started when I was five years old oh okay so when you were a child you had yes you're I gifted was, uh, yes the book explains how it first started uh -huh. and it just the premonition started rolling in and I kept having repetitive dreams where they were actually coming true. Oh, I, dreams. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> with me. And so I started through the years working with angels. I also work with angels. They guide me and they will tell me also things uh, to, I will be out in the street. I'll give you an example. I'll be yeah. somewhere or at a restaurant. I will do a reading on my waiter. And yes, just, uh, just practicing. Uh -huh. So they, I, you know, I'll ask them for permission if I could, you know, I ask them if they're spiritual. A lot of times they say yes. And I said, well, you know, I'm a medium. I, you know, and I go to the bill and they're like, okay, well, what do you see? And then their jaw drops when I start telling them information and what I need for them to know about. I said, and they, a lot, a few of them have actually cried in front of me and I'm not trying to make them, you know, break down, mm -hmm. but it, there seems to be like a, not an understanding. A lot of people, you know, from what I've gathered is they, they take all, everything that happens to them in, internally, they internalize themselves. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, I'm a stranger, but I can completely understand what they're going through. So those are the kinds of things that I have experienced. I mean, I can just read somebody. Another example I can give you that's in the book is I was at a spa and I read the young lady. A few months later, I actually had an appointment with her because my husband and I were going to Costa Rica. Well, it turns out uh, she starts talking about her cousin being murdered. And I said, no, don't, don't tell me anything. Let me see if I can see. So I can astrologically travel to, uh, to that space of where the incident happened. I described everything, what I was seeing, what I was hearing, and I relayed it back to her. And she just about broke down crying. She said exactly yeah. what you're describing is how my cousin died and where she died. So it's, it's uh, I can pick up things like that. And I've been working closely uh, with my deceased great, great grandfather. Mm. He's my, he explained to me where he used to do his healings. I've never been there. I didn't know anything about that place. I told my mother, my mother has never met him. Mm. Okay. She goes, do you know what that place is? And I said, no, I don't. And she says that the Virgin Mary appeared to the people there. Mm. That is believed to be one of the most holiest places. So there is going to be a series behind my book. And that's going to be an extension of my grandfather's healing. Uh, since he has a lot of wisdom through that era that he lived in. Um, and I want to go ahead and continue and, in, in, you know, his legacy. Wow. Um, yes. So, so is it, so is it the kind of thing, it sounds to me like, you know, you're from your family lineage almost yes. that you inherit I these. I have uh, nieces and I believe a nephew that's spiritually gifted. Uh huh. My mother is gifted. Uh, she is part Mayan. My grandmother was full Mayan. Wow. Yes. So this, so these power, like powers, I guess, <laughs> these abilities. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is amazing. Cause I've, you know, all, so many of us would love to reconnect with our loved ones or have yeah. answers and get, get ans questions answered and understand more. And I think even just find find comfort in like, right. okay, that person has moved on and they're not, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, so I'm, yeah, like my student, when she was coming, I didn't meet, I didn't know any of her friends. Okay. She was a massage therapist. My husband was seen. He just felt, you know, you need to talk to my wife about your gifts. Okay. So, uh, she started, she would just give me names. That's another ability that I have. A person can just give me a person's name and I can tell you what kind of person they were you know, I can actually, if they, they've, you know, they're deceased, I can pretty much pick up what, you know, what they're doing, what, where they were at before they died. Cause she blamed herself for a car accident that their cousin oh. uh, was in or her friend, I believe. 
And I said, no, it wasn't your fault. He was oh. reaching over. I'm seeing it's, it's almost like he's taking me on his ride and showing me this is what happened. Yeah. So I- yeah. It's interesting. It's like, it sounds like you're also helping them heal through yeah. like some of their trauma experiences, right? With this information. Is that, yeah. yeah. That is correct. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. it's like, you know, sometimes I think, okay, we're all, we're all here on earth and we're all have our different traumas. And it's like, it's like a mandatory process that we're, you know, heal through our traumas and uh, get through the hardships and the disasters and things like that. Yeah. So um, yeah. Are, so are you, it sounds like you're, you're starting to like do this work with other people. Do, do people come to you for these readings or how does, how does it work if someone Actually, wants to? I've been doing them. Uh, I just, I started, I just opened my business. So I oh, okay. starting, you know, out with that. And so I've had to get a lot of uh, stuff lined up. Um, I didn't realize how much work it was to line everything up, but, yeah. but it's there, the, the website's there. And so I just started doing readings. My family was experiencing hauntings in their homes. So I was going there and my niece who was gifted as well was experiencing a lot of stuff in her bedroom. Oh, okay. I told my sister-in-law, don't tell me, I, I want to see what I pick up. I walk in, I, I drive, it's like a 40 minute drive from my house. So I arrived, they're sitting in the living room and I, and they, they said, okay. I said, no one said anything. I just want to come go up there and see what I pick up. Mm-hmm. I started hearing children oh. and I, I started hearing like a swing rolling back and forth. And then I explained to them who I was and that I wasn't there to hurt them, that mm-hmm. if they did, I could cross them to the light. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. So you, 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 do you help get rid of these or entities or, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you, you said you help them cross over to the light because they're kind yeah. of stuck here. Is that right? Yes. They were, they were, um, they were scared. I heard a lot of whispering and I also, I knew it was children because I could hear the swing moving back and forth. You know how as kids in the playground, you hear that squeaky chain. Yeah. Oh, so creepy. I don't know. This is like. Yeah. yeah. So I went back downstairs and I told my sister-in-law and my, my niece, this is what I heard. She goes, yep, they're children. That My niece confirmed it. And she didn't hear anything else after that because uh, they decided to go ahead and have me cross them over. I usually see an angel crossing them, you know, they're, they're, she's waiting there. Cause I call her upon her and I could see the hand, you know, being held by the child and the angel. So as they're, you know, obviously disappearing on me, but I, I'm not afraid of that. I, um, I do get uh, publicly, I get approached spiritually. I know that sounds kind of bizarre, but they know that I can pick them up and know that they're there. Yeah. It sounds like the, the spirits are attracted to you on some level. Like you walk in through the ghost town and it's like, they come, it's like your yeah. little magnet for these type yeah. of energy. Uh, right. being. So are they like these, like when you're helping them transition to the other side, like, do they know why they're stuck or what are they confused? Like, what is, what is, what yeah. is well, the experience that they're, that this is creating yeah. for you know, souls? Uh, but- cause confusion like for example the woman at the restaurant or that I heard mm-hmm. that she had passed away the property and it's not even online I try to search that restaurant where we went to to see if something was there nothing was posted on there about her death and I ended up she goes I don't know what I'm doing here she I recall her saying that I said she said I feel very lost and I said well I can cross you to the light if you'd like I, I, I said I'm not going to force you I'm going to leave it up to you if you want to and she went ahead and said yes oh, wow. so I created a uh, white light coming down the property she was escorted by two angels and then she disappeared wow so this is like you're you're here doing this work and like okay if you weren't there they, they would still be stuck or something right. like that and so it would be and I asked for permission from the young lady who took our order I, I, I went back I toured the property I didn't want to know the history of it uh-huh. I wanted to kind of see what I sensed I'm one of those people that I would rather just pick up whatever comes my way 
And so uh, I asked her before my husband and I, and I left if it was okay if I crossed her over. She says, yeah, you, you, you cross her. If she's still around, cross her over. There's a plaque. So uh, my husband and I got a little lost trying to find the plaque. He ended up finding it. So he went to the car and that's where I talked to her. Oh, wow. Yes. And do you have experience encountering like negative energies yes. or entities? Yeah. What, yes. what are I had, uh, two, for two and a half years, I had a spiritual attachment. Oh, negative, they're like attached to you. Uh-huh. Yes. And so it was really hard to, you know, get rid of a lot of times. And this is through the, the mentoring that I got from Miss Weber, the famous psychic. Okay. That, yeah. You know, she says a lot of times we have energy when we're spiritually gifted, our en- energy reduces itself and we expose ourselves to the, you know, anything that comes through and they take advantage of that. So that's why it's very important to create boundaries. Mm, okay. When you have spiritual abilities like I do, because they will take advantage of that. Are you doing like, like daily practices of protection or like what? Cause you know, sometimes I hear these things like we should be clearing out our aura and like detaching anything negative that might've been coming in and, you know, radiating positive light. Like, is that something that you're doing daily? Uh, Well, what I do is every, uh, maybe every three days or so I use rue and and I bathe in rue. I have a large bathtub. What's rue? rue? It's an herb. Okay. E is the name of the, the herb and it just, it's a cleansing herb. Uh-huh. So what I do is I will throw that in Himalayan salt in my bath. Okay. So I also use what is called the holy stick. And I didn't know Mayans use that for, for cleansings. So I use that on myself or oh. I'll use sage. Yeah. People are like, you know, the burning of the sage is something that I'm a little bit familiar with or um, yeah. So these things basically, they help create a, a, a like a protective field. Is that right? Uh, it's it's uh it clears out the in, in my interpretation of it is it clears out the aura mm. and so um i also i i am protected because i call upon in our ancestors mm. my ancestors are i believe holy so they've been able to protect me and it's mentioned in the book of an of an incident that happened to me concerning a neighbor a next door neighbor mm. i need at the time and so they came and I knew that they came because I could feel the energy and the vibration of them right yeah yeah no yeah I I was just curious because some people feel like they have uh like I don't know black magic or generational curses like you know I've heard some things like that right where we have um I don't know like do, do are you are you finding that that people have like black magic done on them and they're they're yeah. that's why they have these problems and that they or is it something also generational or from past lives i don't know like what's creating all of well, these i've actually had black magic on me by oh people. and the the ritual i did what told me who it was which was very interesting because it came in through a vision uh it, it uh it's like a i haven't done it in a while but it it, it it plagued me for a very long time. I, I didn't have a relationship, a stable relationship. Uh, it just, you know, everything. And I even had a friend of mine tell me, she goes, you know, I really think you have something on you. Everything that you go through, it just seems like it's negative. Your mm-hmm. job, you know, money, your relationships. And after I did that, it, it just pretty much opened the, the door for a lot of things after I did that. Yeah, some people feel like, Oh my God, I must be cursed, right? Like, mm-hmm. is that, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so this is amazing. So people can, you know, if they, if they feel that way, maybe they come to you and then you can tell them like, Probably, I could, I could likely pick up if it's anything negative um, and guide them. Uh, a lot of times we are our own uh, critics on the things that we face, but to me, I would need to pick up what a vibration behind it. I've actually experienced that in, in an office that I started working at. Mm. The young lady was plagued by her, um, 
don't know if the son's girlfriend did some black magic. And even before she approached me, I didn't know who it was. I was told about the young lady there at, at the office. I, I got chills all over my body. I already knew it was her who had the problem. It's like these lovers, uh, you know, people with jealousy or they want to yeah. have like a, that, that someone else's partner and <laughs> they do. Yeah. Black. Oh my God. Is that the, the reason that people do that, I don't know if you're aware of that. You may or may not. I don't know. But yeah, uh, my interpretation is when people do that is because they don't have empowerment of their own life. They want to control other people. Mm. And the only method of controlling is through witchcraft. Right. So there's casting spells and doing this, this stuff actively. And then we have to, it has to be undone somehow. It sounds like you need a professional. <laughs> well, the thing of it is, is once you, you reach that, that help, it gets returned three times. And so what does that mean? It, well, it, it goes along the lines of what goes around comes around. Right. But it'll go around three times, three times, meaning three bad things that will be happening to that person. Who, who did, did the spell? Who did the spell? Right. Right. Yes. So so that's like incurring the karma, right? Like that's how the karma yeah. comes back to you, like you said, what goes around. It's a laws wow. of attraction. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh and so I ended up getting the help uh for the black magic that those three people did. Now, I did find out what happened to uh, one of them. And so um, it was a, a good situation. Two, or actually, two, two of them, I knew what happened to. Very, very horrible. Because mm, he sent it back, right? And then they yeah. get what was coming to And um, a lot of it has to do with empowerment. And anything drastic that happens, especially when that two and a half your negative entity attached itself to me. I was going through a divorce from my first husband. And when you don't have empowerment behind that, you tend to reduce your energy. You, you know, don't want to do much. You, and I was one of those people. So I completely would understand if, if somebody was going through something like that. And I, I had it for two and a half years, that negative wow. attack. And it yeah. would make noise and it tried to talk to me, it was muffled. Um, it would, anybody who would try and help me, he would go visit them, he, like my mother and my sister. They tried to help me. Yes. And so is, are some of these things also like, I know we've talked a lot about generational and your, you know, your, your ancestry and things like that. Mm -hmm. Is a, like, sometimes I've heard that like the patterns that we're playing out in this life are like, we played them out in lifetimes past, right? It's like, um, if, if you're experiencing something with someone and you, you likely maybe had a soul contract with them in a previous life and you have to play out this karma is, is that how you, is that how you see it as well? When you're, when well, people are going through some of this stuff, the abilities that I, um, I want to say inherited came from a reincarnation and the reincarnation came from, uh, my, the psychic Ms. Weber believed or picked up on that it had to do with my grandmother. And my grandmother uh, was uh, also, um, she was gifted. She worked closely with my great, great grandfather who was likely his mother is what she uh, described. And so she, you know, had these abilities. And so she believed, my mentor believed that I inherited that. So I had no explanation. And my mother, you know, at first was pretty fearful because she didn't know, you know, if somebody was going to hurt me. And I told her, look, you know, I have these gifts. I have to share them with people and try and help them um, because, you know, if God gave me these gifts, why would I not want to use them and help people? Right. It sounds like you're you're doing the work to clear all of these negative energies and entities. So we need it like more of this work done. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, what do you say about for people who are, you know, maybe fearful and they're just, they're, they're too scared to do anything about, okay. You know, I, you know, they just want to cover it up. Right. They don't want to deal with some of these things. Like, do you get people, yes. you know, uh, is it, is there a need to really work through that fear and like, and then actually do this work? And, and find someone like you to help them? <laughs> I met a woman uh, before, I've, I've actually met uh, a number of people in my lifetime. And one specifically sticks out that she was just so fearful. 
she was spiritually gifted. I can't force somebody to be open to that, even though she experienced a haunting and her little boy who was two years old was also gifted. And I told her it was a woman that was around them that she didn't mean any harm at all. And I said, if you want, I can, I can help you. Uh, I can try and help you, you know, establish your gifts, you know, grow your gifts. Oh, and wow. she's very scared. Yeah. They're so scared. They both, well, you know, whenever you're ready, you know, you'll be ready. My sister, older sister has is spiritually gifted, but she was scared. And now some things have happened to her in her personal life. And so she's now getting guidance from me. Wow. So uh, I'm actually, I give her uh, a lot of, <laughs> I give her a lot of free readings. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. She said you got your, yeah, your family. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're helping them get over these limiting, yes. you know, limitations and, and right. break to, to these abilities. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you, and it also sounds like there's some medical uh, correlation with this work. Like, um, can you tell me a little bit about how that translates into like the healing or, you know, helping people heal when they get into these abilities and like helping others learn, learn how to do that? Are you referring to like a, a medical intuitive? Yeah, because you said you said in the beginning you're starting to go into that medical yeah. intuitive. So how does this kind of bridge over into you know physical afflictions or ailments that people might have, or they start to develop if you know you know of, they want to clear? A lot of times, uh, what it is is that when people have an ailment, that your your body's telling you there's something wrong, and I believe that that's associated to the person's personal life and mm. how they're dealing with that. And so um, it's important to identify that. And I, I'm not going to say that I can completely heal somebody, like physically heal. The yeah. yeah. Do an initiative with a medical physician. Right. See, I can just, I, I, I can guide them on the need for that help through a medical professional and just tell them, okay, I'm seeing, for example, I'm seeing this on somebody. Okay, that's associated. I'll give you an example. I met a young man at a restaurant. He was a manager, very nice guy. And I, he believed in that. He was spiritually gifted and he didn't know how to use his gifts. Mm. So I told him, look, you know, call me sometime. I can sit down with you and I'll do it for free. And that way, you know, you, you can get the help that you need. And I said, I'm also noticing visually I can pick up. I, I was telling him, you're, you're moving your arm a lot, your right arm. And he will, he's looking at me and surprised. And he said, I said, you've been having problems with that. And he said, yes, I have. How did you know that? <laughs> so I can see that. And it, it's related to some personal things that he has been going through. And he's just been ignoring <laughs> in his, you know, life, those personal problems. And I said, that's not good if you're ignoring them. You got to address them. Uh, and I said, you need to take care of that arm. Right. Said, Heard it pop. I can hear it. And he wasn't doing it at all. He wasn't, he was just very, you know, surprised that, um, that I saw that. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's like, it, it, you, it's, we have to, it's like a mandatory thing that we get rid of these negative energy entities yes. or any energy things. And then, you know, a lot of times it's connected to our personal relationships. And if we aren't dealing with these things, then they get worse and worse before they, yeah, they before do. they get better and yes, make us sick. Even it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. So this is great. So let's, you know, I know that you just are kind of getting started in this work, but you are mentoring. You sounds like you're doing some coaching and, you know, for our listeners who might be interested in, in working with you or, or, or reaching out to maybe have some of these, this reading done, like where, where, where can people go when they want to find they, more information about they this? Can, uh, they can reach out to uh, www.mayanspirit.org and just send me an email message through there. Okay. And I'll it, and then I'll look at my calendar uh, to uh, schedule the person in. And uh, I haven't literally started uh, creating workshops. Eventually, I would love to do that to educate people and, you know, to talk about my book as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's the plan. And so, um, 
that's where I'm at at this point. Amazing. Well, that's great. Yeah. And I think you're also, uh, we found each other on some social media. So can yeah. people find you on Instagram or Facebook? Where's the best place to Facebook, pay? Uh, and they can uh, click on the, the link there on my website. Uh, they'll see it rolling the word Facebook. They, if they click on that, they'll, they'll, they'll find it. Okay, great. Well, this is amazing. And I've learned so much. I personally would like to have some of these <laughs> readings done and get questions answered in my life. And I know our listeners would love that too. Um, you know, before we wrap up, is there anything else, any final words you'd like to share with anyone who's listening or, you know, who's maybe struggling with these things and, and they, you know, they want to, they want to get help or have more they information. Can, they, 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 they don't feel comfortable. The, the very first step is buying the book validation of a healer. What you uh-huh. want by Maya and Indian spirit. And they can purchase that through Amazon. If they want a one-on-one consultation, they're more than welcome to reach out to me through my website and we can sit down and, and talk about it. Uh, it may be that they may not need to tell me much. Uh, I will pick up the energies or if they have a, a name of a person that they're concerned with, they can just give me the name of the person. They don't need to tell me much about that person. I'll pick up the energies for that. Person. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Just- yeah. Or, they, or they think they have like a black magic spell or they have a negative energy problem in their house yeah. or anything like that. Wow. That's you're like those TV shows that I, I keep, you know, <laughs> saying you're like clearing out this stuff. So I'm so excited. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah. This was so informative and yeah, I really learned a lot about souls transitioning to the next level and yeah. oh my gosh, this sounds like you have a lot of you know, real world examples of how you're not only, um, you know, helping on the spiritual realm, but also in our physical and healing journeys and, and all of that. So it's, it's been amazing. Thank you so much uh, for being here today. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah. This is into the light. Sorry. It was a pleasure meeting you. It was such a pleasure, Melissa. I'm so excited. (laughs) And, you know, for all of our listeners who are interested, I'm going to have Melissa's information, uh, you know, listed on my website, www.adinamovana.com. And uh, we'll have her links to her website, of course, the book and any and all the resources from this episode. So thank you so much, Melissa, and have a great day. It was great to have you. you. Bye. (laughs) Bye Bye-bye.